Until the 20th century, serious wounds and cuts were as likely to be treated by a folk practitioner as a licensed medical doctor. After all, the methods of the physician were basically the same as what a folk practitioner would do. They stopped the bleeding, they cleaned the wound, and they would disinfect it, often using the same methods, uh, herbs and spices and cleaning agents like alcohol. Hi, this is Dr. Mary. For the health of it, I'm a traditional naturopath, and I love sharing natural remedies with people for better health. Natural remedies have been around for hundreds, even thousands of years, and they've stayed with us because they work. Thank you for joining me today. The purpose of these particular videos on home health care procedures and solutions is to help you understand how the body works and how you can help it to heal faster. There is no doubt that you should have serious wounds looked at by a medical doctor. I'm not telling you these methods to stop you from doing that. And I'm also not telling you to do this. I would just want to show you that there are things you can do at home to facilitate healing before the emergency people can get to you. The quicker you respond to an injury, the faster it's going to heal. So the first thing you want to do is to stop the bleeding. But before you do this, you want to clear the wound of any clothing or, or particles. If the wound is made by a sharp object, you may not be able to pull it out or it may not be the wisest thing to do. So you have to have some common sense about what you remove and what you can keep in. Make sure that you shout out for somebody to call 911. You need emergency help in most cases. So to stop the bleeding, you want to use compression. So take a sterile cloth or as clean as you can get and push down hard on the wound and continue the pressure until the bleeding stops. If after a few moments it slows, um, you can have the injured person hold it down while you go and get a first aid kit. So then you can apply some sterile bandaging. Make sure that somebody has called 911. If at this point nobody has, then you call 911 and then go on with uh, doing your first aid. So the person should be lying down unless it's a hand wound. Now a hand wound you want above the heart. Um, so if they're lying down, then the hand wound still has to be above the heart. But in most cases, the reason for them to be lying down is that often a person will faint. <laughs> so you don't want them fainting. You want to be able to have them lying down already so that you're not adding injury to injury. In the first aid kit, there should be something to clean the wound. So often you'll have some gauze or something like that. And I use um, a spray uh, made with silver as an uh, antiseptic, and then uh, lavender as a tissue healer, and then some distress remedy. Now you can use just alcohol if you want to. You've seen it in the old TV programs where they dump the alcohol on the wound. But alcohol does clean a wound, but it doesn't really help to facilitate healing, whereas these will help um, disinfect and facilitate healing. So um, if, there, if it continues to bleed, there are several herbs that are recommended to use. Uh, the great Roman physician Gallen won the appointment of doctor after devising a way to stop the bleeding from a serious wound made by a sword by using crushed garlic. Now he took the garlic, smashed it down, and then mixed it with flour to create a paste 
and then he put that on the wound. And that became what is known as wound dressing. And um, it was, uh, tra it traveled all the way to Britain, and then uh, the British decided to use moss. There's lots of moss available in Britain, and it becomes like this sponge-like uh, uh, absorbent material that the blood can uh, seep into. And um, so it, they would infuse it with garlic, which is antibacterial, antimicrobial, um, and it helped to staunch the wound. Genghis Khan would have his soldiers wear silk undergarments, and these silk undergarments were so tight-knit that if it was hit with an arrow, if the body was hit with an arrow, they could pull the material and easily remove the arrow from the wound and then address the wound. Uh, the silk also prevented from some degree uh, debris to get into the wound, and so it kept the wound clean. So it's interesting when you read history books on how these different people recognize the need to uh, help a wound heal, stop bleeding, you only have a certain amount of blood. <laughs> now, gunshot wounds are much different. The bullet invariably goes into the body, it creates more damage behind the entry wound, and therefore the bullet has to be removed, and you have to tear away tissue often to get to the bullet and create more damage. And obviously you don't want to do this. You want to try to keep the bleeding down to a minimum, um, use uh, some compression to do that, and of course, uh, use something to uh, clean the wound as best you can while you're waiting for 911 to appear. Even small cuts like ruptured blisters, scratches, we're going to be doing a lot of gardening now and you've got to be aware, you know, a rose thorn can be uh, it can go into infection if not treated properly. <clears throat> So you want to make sure that your motto is promptly and properly. So um, I'm going to tell you a little story. My husband and I love fire in uh, fires in our uh, wood burning fireplace, and uh, we get every fall some wood for the Knights of Columbus. It's a great fundraiser for them, and then they drop it at a designated area up front, and then my husband puts it in the trailer. Uh, next uh, behind our uh, lawn tractor and brings it downstairs and then continues splitting it. Now they're pretty big pieces that he gets and we found that if you split it, it makes the fire burn faster and he doesn't have to keep bumping it or hitting it uh, to keep it going. So he splits every single one of the uh, logs that he gets and he does it with an electric log splitter. And he was doing this one day and all of a sudden I heard a bang and a scream like he was hurt. And instead of using my usual, are you all right? I said, do you need help? <laughs> and he said, yes. And so as I was going down the stairs, he was heading toward the laundry room downstairs and um, he washed out the wound, and I grabbed a clean towel, and we wrapped the wound. And then he went upstairs, and we sprayed it with uh, silver and some good antibacterial thing. And then we put ice on it and compressed it to try and stop the bleeding. And we were a little concerned because it was two fingers, and the one finger had gone totally white. And so we thought, well, the best thing to do is just make sure that we haven't cut off an artery or injured, uh, hampered the circulation in some way. So we should go to an uh, emergency room. So we thought, well, we'll go to one of these clinics, you know, that would be less cumbersome than going to a hospital. And well, needless to say, three different places and filling out forms and, and still he's bleeding. And it, it was just, 
an absolute ordeal. And um, if I had known, not known about the compression and used the silver, it would have been a, an extremely serious situation. So an hour and a half later, we finally got to see somebody about it, and we told them all we wanted was an x-ray to make sure that there wasn't anything broken and that his circulation hadn't hampered. Well, by this time, there was pink in the finger, and we knew he had circulation was continuing, and uh, he wasn't going to get gangrene or anything. And then they approached us with a tetanus shot and we refused. And so at that point, they were angry at us. So they ran down and got the x-ray, came back. They slapped some iodine on the wound and then clamped two splinters on the injured fingers, no dressing, and sent us home. Well, approximately $3,000 for that, all that stuff that hesitation and 10 cents worth of iodine and uh, $2 for a splint. It, it, we felt it was so ridiculous. Now, I'm not saying that every hospital experience is gonna be this way. I'm just explaining my story and what happened with us for $3,000. I mean, that can buy a lot of herbs. So uh, the next morning, the, the uh, cl clamps the, were stuck to his uh, tissue because they had not put any dressing on it. It was, it, it was real, I mean, I certainly, with my limited knowledge, could have done tenfold better. So I, it's just that I think people need to know what to do, how to take care of uh, injuries quickly and, uh, do an adequate job of it. So back to the tetanus job. Why, why didn't we want a tetanus shot? Well, if you, this is something you have to make a decision on, but you wanna look into why a tetanus shot is necessary. Tetanus shots are necessary when you create an injury or uh, get an injury from something that may have animal feces on it, it's dirty. This was clean wood, it was bleeding. There was no way there was infection still in that wound. It had bled like crazy. We had used silver. We had um, treated it to stop infection. Hello, everyone. Thank you for watching. Um, and thank you for those hearts. Um, so we also do immune supports. We take resveratrol, mushroom powder, D3. We try to eat healthy. So we're not talking about somebody who is uh, immune deficient. We're talking about somebody who is relatively healthy. So why would we want to put these chemicals and adjuvants into our body and then have another thing for our immune system to have to deal with? So it's just our personal opinion. I'm not saying it's right for everyone. You really need to do your own research on that. And, um, and, and the, with everything that I'm saying, if it doesn't feel right, don't do it. I don't want you just to do what I'm telling you to do. I want you to think about it and create your own um, protocol of what you feel is the right thing to do. So, but promptly and properly, those are your cues. If you're sitting around waiting for 911, bleeding to death, doesn't do you any good. So uh, on the way to the hospital, my husband was hurting, and so he was kind of panting. So I said to him, do me a big favor. Take a deep breath, count to 10, and then you can pant. And then take another deep breath. And after a short, very short time, he noticed that the bleeding was slower and he felt less pain. Now, this is something employed by midwives for women giving birth, that breathing is essential to diminishing pain and uh, calming the person down. 
So you can look into that as well, how important breathing is. But certainly what we experienced in that hospital did not warrant a $3,000 bill. So some of the, the second thing you want to do is stop the bleeding. So first of all, you want to clamp down on it, uh, stop the bleeding, and then maybe you want to take some herbs. So one of the herbs, um, yarrow, that I found to be extremely helpful, this is, you can get these um, downloads from my website, uh, bornforhealth.com, and read all about the yarrow. You can purchase from the website. You can share with other people. But yarrow contains an alkaloid principle called achilleline, as well as flavonoids, volatile oils, potassium, calcium salts of organic acids, and tannins. And its effects are most astringent, and that's what you need. You need something to draw the tissue together. And this is what a yarrow looks like. It's a beautiful garden plant. I grow uh, both white yellow, yellow yarrow, and pink yarrow. And there's just, it's pretty, it's ferny, uh, and it's one of the herbs that I like to dry. And I would not necessarily say that I've used it on wounds. We didn't in my husband's case because I, you know, you're kind of like running on instinct at this point. And I had that spray already made, and so we, we uh, sprayed the wound to clean it and we used an ice pack to clamp down in it to slow the bleeding down. You do what is immediately in your brain to do. So that's why it's important to review these things. I love this book. This book is um, uh, was given to me when I got my MD degree by uh, one of my favorite people. And it has been really helpful. And a lot of the history I got on wound, taking care of wounds, came from this book. So uh, there's lots of wonderful books out there that can help you uh, learn more about how to treat different things because, you know what, accidents aren't planned. So um, here's another clip from Yarrow. It says, Yarrow's astringent quality tightens tissues and helps stop diarrhea because anything that is excessive flow, um, it uh, helps with nosebleeds and uh, heavy menstrual flow. So you can make a tea out of it. And um, yarrow contains flavonoids that are antispasmodic. And um, it helps to eliminate uric acid buildup in the joints, which contributes to arthritis and gout. So, you know, doing a, a nice tea with yarrow, uh, I like to add mint to my teas. It just makes it more pleasant to drink. So another herb that I've, I've talked about before when we did our bites and stings is plantain. Now plantain is a very astringent herb as well. You can take a leaf, chew it up. So if you have a wound and you're not near uh, your first aid kit, one of the things you can do is take make sure that it's not been chemically treated, uh, is take a, a plantain leaf and I've told you in other videos how to find out plantain and wipe it off and then just chew it up a little bit. Now you're getting some of the liquid in you, which is helping to go into the bloodstream and to staunch bleeding like that. Uh, and you can apply that as a poultice just that quickly, quickly, promptly and properly. So. Much of the information that I've given you is available on the internet. You can take classes from Red Cross on uh, how to take care of accidental injuries, and uh, then you can bump it up with some of the herbs that I've talked about. So again, a plug for this, distress remedy. Anytime you have an injury like that, I like to have distress both in the, in the uh, spray that I use and to give the person because uh, it's shock and trauma accompany these injuries and you want to help uh, the best you can and Distress Remedy is wonderful for that. Plus it has the Arnica in it which addresses the pain 
part of it. Now I want to tell you, you know, I've employed these methods and they've worked for me and that's why I'm sharing them with you. And I firmly believe that we have within us a God energy that assists us in healing. And we can call this God energy, whatever you want to call it, universal intelligence, whatever. And it works with our immune system to help us heal. Look at all those hearts. Thank you so much. So um, the information I've given to you on the supplements is um, on my website under Urban Cyclopedia, bornforhealth.com. Just look it up. It's there's lots of wonderful information, past classes, links to my YouTube videos. Um, so be sure to click on that. Uh, now, another favorite herb of mine is comfrey. And I've talked about comfrey before when we did the bruises. Uh, it, it's a marvelous tissue healer. And drinking it as a tea helps you to... Uh, because it's so high in calcium, it helps uh, bones heal. It's a beautiful plant that grows uh, somewhere up to six feet. It has little teeny purple bell-shaped flowers. It really is a lovely plant. And every once in a while, it'll send a shoot to share. <laughs> so I have shoots to share. <laughs> if you live in the Waterford area and you'd like to have some, it's just starting to come up now and you can email me and we'll set a time where you can come and get some free comfrey. So the thing you want to know about comfrey is that because it is such a good tissue healer, you do not want to apply it to a deep wound because the tissue on the top layer of uh, the skin will heal faster than below and then that creates a problem. You wanna be able to heal from the depth of the wound um, to the uh, tissue, it, through the tissues to the top layer of the skin. So <clears throat> garlic, plantain, and comfrey all contain the same constituent called allantoin, and this is a, a, a chemical that actually is a uh, wound healer and uh, antiseptic. So um, I want you to share these videos with other people, share what you've learned. Uh, I think everybody should know that you can do many things at home before 911 comes. <laughs> um, I like using silver. Uh, there are many silver out there. I just happen to love the company Nature Sunshine that produces those because I know the quality. I also love lavender. Lavender is my go-to essential oil. Um, I use it on burns and cuts and uh, it smells wonderful. So, <laughs> so be sure to um, look into these. Uh, if you would like to have the first aid kit suggestions, you can send me a stamp self addressed envelope and I'll be happy to slip that in there and send it back to you. In a few weeks, I'm going to be doing a Zoom class. It's actually a two-part class. And if you'd like to attend it live, send me an email, uh, drmary at bornforhealth.com. And I will make sure that you get the information on how to link into that. It's a free class. Uh, it's gonna be in two parts about the immune system. The first part will be about the physical immune system, how you can help it better. Uh, the second one is about how the emotions cause it to go haywire. And uh, so I think it's gonna be a very fun class and exciting. So uh, take some classes on um, first aid and uh, you know, like American Red Cross, whatever, even Boy Scout manual. There's tons of information, and if you have one of those laying around, and um, keep watching these videos because you can ramp up those suggestions with herbs and uh, all kinds of first aid at home things. Uh, share what you've learned. Recommend these videos to uh, your friends. Uh, share them, do a party, of a watch party, and um, be sharing them with them. Take notes, uh, watch them over. You know, sometimes you can't get everything at once. So keep focusing on gratitude, be thankful for the people around you, and 
gifts of nature, the flowers, and all the joy around you. Thank you for viewing today. Until next time, this is Dr. Mary for the Health of It.